हेलो एंड वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल एट भूमि ग्राउंड फॉर एजुकेशन आई भूमिका बत्रा डिस्कसिंग द स्टेप्स एंड द ऑल्टरनेट्स टू बी एन एक्सपर्टाइज इन अ फील्ड इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस रिगार्डिंग द लिटरेचर रिव्यू हाउ टू डू लिटरेचर रिव्यू एंड हाउ टू राइट द लिटरेचर रिव्यू इन योर थीसिस चैप्टर टू एंड फॉर योर रिसर्च पेपर literature review there are two essentials which needs to be keep in mind the first is number of citations second year of publication number of citation means more people or how many people have referred to that article the greater the number of citations better the quality of a paper is of course there is something in that particular paper because of which many people have referred to that paper year of publication it is always a good practice to review the only those papers especially the last 5 to 10 years so that you will be up, up to date that what is happening or what were the objectives have been undertaken in the recent years so number of citations and year of publication acts as a basic elements while downloading or going for a search for articles if you are at initial stage or just a beginner in phd always start literature review using this practice draw a table add few columns to it the first column states to the author name and the year of the research he has undertaken author name with the year second go with the title the geographical location what are the objectives of that particular paper the research methodology research methodology is just one name it's very vast if you'll go into it into its methodology like it includes the sample size data collection tools the variables used in the study which statistical techniques was applied then in the end for the last column go with the findings or conclusions this table will help every researcher in very concise and precise manner of literature review if you are a beginner add one more column to it the last column after findings which will be the observation observation is what you have observed in that particular article what's your point of view i say observation is the research gap and this research gap is very important to take out in order to frame the objectives and because of these research gaps the significance of your study will be defined i generally talk about the research gaps like research gaps are the objective minus findings what they have aimed for and what they came out with will be your research gap it's not only confined to findings but you can also deal with the methodology what kind of methodology was used you can vary that like sample size you can change your sample size you can change your geographical location the variables and the statistical techniques in such a manner you can frame the best literature review out of all the 5200 literature reviews the articles and due to this uh, research gap your justification or significance of your study will be drawn and out of that uh, significance you will be it will be easier for you to frame your objectives so this table will help you throughout your phd because literature review is a never ending process and it will act as a guide or a friend for you so if you are a beginner go with the observation column 
if you are just on a verge of completion of your thesis or you're writing the chapter two, you can leave this observation column, but while writing the theoretical part, while you are writing this literature review in paragraphs beneath this table, you can obviously write the observation. It's a very good practice. It's a very good thing to show the observation as well. It will give a good impact on our examiner. So that's all about the literature review, how to do it and how to write it, the literature review section, whether it's your thesis or research paper. If you are interested to learn how to analyze your data using SPSS, whether it's a parametric or non-parametric test, you can visit www.edbhumi.com. There on the website, you go to the courses offered. The first module will be for research methodology where I explain each and every concepts of research, how to do the literature review in detail, how to frame the objectives, how to extract the variables out of those objectives. What is hypothesis? How does the p-value come from? From where does this p-value came? How to write the null and alternate hypothesis? What are the different sampling techniques? What are the data collection tools? We'll discuss more about the questionnaire. Then which statistical techniques to be applied and what kind of objective, the plagiarism and the last part, references. That's all about the literature, uh, this research methodology module. Moreover, if you wish to learn regression, logistics, factor analysis, non-parametric, you can go for such modules. And there is also a combo offer for if you wish to take all of the courses at one go. So every detail, every detail regarding the contents, the price and the duration will be available on www.edbumi.com. Do not forget to check the demonstration and feedback there on the website as well as in the YouTube and on Facebook page. So after checking the demonstration, make a decision to choose the Edbumi. If you like this video, kindly subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for more updates. Do share as much as you can. I will be updating my next video very soon. Till the time, if you have any queries or any content which needs to be covered in the next video, kindly DM me or put it in a comment box. Bye.